Okay, moving on to example 10. Sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 3x minus 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 8. First, examine the numerator and denominator to determine whether there are any common factors. This right here represents a big frustration for me. It's not difficult, but 8 out of 9 students miss this problem on the test every time, every year. I don't know why. And I, I don't know if it's something the way, about the way I teach it. I don't know if I, I never give this warning in advance, but I just, based on evidence in the past, however many years, this problem here is missed by almost all my students on the test. I don't know if there's enough, not enough practice in the homework assignments for it, uh, whether it didn't quite make 100% sense when I taught it and people just, instead of asking them for help, they just um, let it go. But I don't know, it frustrates me because it's not difficult. It really isn't, but a lot of students miss it. So if anything doesn't make sense, please bring it to my attention and I'll try and make more sense of it. Um, if we go ahead and follow the exact procedure I gave to you on Friday um, for the graphing of anything, any rational function, our first task is to establish vertical, horizontal, and or slant asymptotes. All right. now if I start off my vertical asymptotes, I simply take the denominator x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals to 0. That's a quadratic function. I happen to see that it factors to x minus 2 times x minus 4. That gets me candidates for the vertical asymptote of x equals positive 2 and x equals positive 4. That doesn't mean that's what the vertical asymptotes are. That simply means that's what the vertical asymptotes might be. We then have to verify that either one of those answers makes the top also equal to 0. So if I try 2 up here for x in the top, 2 squared 4 minus 6 negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 2 makes the top negative 6, negative 6 over 0 is undefined. That is an actual vertical asymptote for this problem. If I try 4 up in the top, 4 squared is 16, minus 3 times 4, 12 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. This makes the top equal to 0, it also made the bottom equal 0. So again, we've already established the bottom equals 0 with this number. We see the top also equals 0 with this number. That means it's not a vertical asymptote. It also means immediately, as soon as you see that happening, Go ahead and make an xy chart with an oc next to the x equals 4. If any value on the vertical asymptote list gets thrown out, it immediately has to go on your chart with an open circle notation next to it. So when I plot this point, whatever the point is, we haven't figured out what it is yet. If we try and put that equation in and type it in our table, our table is going to not like it. It's going to say error because our calculator is lazy. Our calculators are smart enough, they can figure this out, but they're lazy. So anyway, let me just show you real quick. If we try it out real quick, um, clear out all this stuff we had before. x squared minus 3x minus 4. Forgot my beginning parentheses. divided by x squared minus 6x plus 8. And I go to my table and type in 4, it's going to say error because the function I have in there creates division by 0 at 4. So what I have to do as a math student now is I need to modify this expression so that I can put 4 in legally with no division by 0. And the way we do that is real simple. If 4 makes the bottom equal to 0, and 4 makes the top equal to 0. That means they both have in factored form x minus 4. As a factor. Okay, they're polynomial functions. If 4 makes the thing equal 0, x minus 4 is a factor. Okay, to get the remaining, obviously this is going to be times x minus 2. We've already established that one, right? And this one's going to be easy enough. Um, Negative 4 times 1, negative 4 plus 1, so that's going to be x plus 1. If it was more complicated than that, let's say it was a cubic function on top and a, maybe a square function on the bottom, and you get this common factor, you can always do synthetic division. You take your root, do synthetic division, it gives you the reduced polynomial. We've been dealing with that already. x minus 4 on top and bottom cancels. This equation here, this expression, has the same graph as that, except 4 can be put into that one. 5 over 2, right, has an actual value, 
All right, so if we take a look at that then, I'm going to back here y, and I'm going to type in parentheses x plus 1 divided by parentheses x minus 2. Okay, and I'm going to set my window from, let's say, 3 to 5 and from 0 to 5. There we go. Watch the blue graph and then watch the red graph go on top of it. All right, so this is the first graph. Notice when you get to 4, there's going to be a hole. See the hole there? Now the red graph is exactly the same graph, but the hole gets filled in. Because again, at 4, if we look at our table, at 4, the red graph can be evaluated. The blue graph can't. Because we took care of the division by 0 by canceling out those x minus 4s. But they're exactly the same expression, except for that one point. One graph sits right on top of the other, because they're exactly the same. The only difference is the red graph doesn't have a hole in it. The blue graph did. So, that's how you handle that situation. If your vertical asymptote number makes the top equal to zero also, look for factored form to cancel out the zero, leaving yourself with an expression not containing that division by zero for that specific number. And again, of course, 2.5 we saw in our table is what our outcome is. The way that one point gets graphed, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2.5 is an open circle. That's how you graph it. No value is available right there because legally I wasn't allowed to put 4 into this function but I have the ability with algebra to figure out what it should have equaled if I could. All right? The rest of the graph is just going to go around that, and it's up to me to find the rest of this stuff. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to do is uh, deal with either horizontal or slant asymptotes. Looking at the highest power on top, highest power on the bottom, they're exactly the same. So it's going to be a horizontal asymptote. And all we do is take the highest power term on top over the highest power term on the bottom, reduce, came out the whole number, so y equals that number is the horizontal asymptote on this one. And the final thing is we need to actually graph this thing, so we need to pick enough points in order to figure out what the graph is supposed to look like. I'm going to pick numbers near 2. I'm also going to pick numbers near 4. Okay, and if that's enough information, great. If not, I'm going to pick extra points. So, uh, picking near 2, I'm going to go 0, 1, 1 1.5. All those are less than 2, getting really, really close to 2. Going on the other side of 2, I'm going to get 2.5, 3, and 4. We've already got 4 taken care of. Um, and again, picking near 4, maybe I'm going to pick 5 and 6 also. Okay. Don't worry about picking those halfway points when you've got an open circle. The whole reason for a half point, or that half distance is to see if it's going up or down. Holes don't go up or down. They just go as they were. So, hole and keep going. So, it's not going to go up or down. So, you don't have to get those halves in there. Again, those aren't magical numbers, they're just ones I picked. Gives me enough information to come over to my table here. I'm going to clear out the top equation. When you're trying to evaluate when there's a hole in it, just um, do the simplified version as your equation. That's going to give you all the answers. They have exactly the same answers everywhere else anyway. All right, and we record our answers from 2.540, 0, negative 0.5. We got 1, negative 2, 1.5, negative 5, 2.57, 3, 4, 5, 2, 6, 1.75. All right, uh, looking at those answers, uh, 7 is the biggest, negative 5 is the smallest, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My graph only goes up to 6, but if I did a 1 to 1 scale, I can kind of ballpark where 7 should be anyway, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go with the 1 to 1 scale here. Once I've established 1 to 1 scale, I'm going to graph my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. x equals 2 is right here. It should be a dotted line. And y equals 1 would be right here. And then we simply plot the points we have. We've already got the open circle plotted at 4, 2.5. That's the part that people, for some reason, don't remember when it comes time to take a test. They just invent some new way of doing it that doesn't do that. And um, they think there's an asymptote there instead of not being an asymptote. They, the graph goes right through the asymptote, which is not allowed to. I've said many times, you can't go through a vertical asymptote. So it's, it's got to go either straight up or straight down. Once you see it doesn't, that should clue you into something's going wrong with this. Maybe there's a hole instead of an asymptote. But again, that's the one part that messes people up. I don't know why. I, I, again, it doesn't seem that complicated to me. Zero on top and bottom. Put that number here. Figure out what it should be based on a simplified version. 
0, negative 0.5 is right here, 1, negative 2 right there, uh, 1.5, negative 5. We got 2.57, and again, 6, 7 is about here maybe. Uh, 3, 4 is here. 4, comma, 2.5, we already got taken care of. 5, 2, 6, 1.75. Okay, so this side here looks to be plenty of points for me to figure it out. It's going straight up at the asymptote. It's leveling off towards the horizontal asymptote. We're far enough away from zero, we should expect it not to cross the horizontal asymptote at this point. So it would be a lot closer than that if it was going to cross. So it's just going to flatten out going that way. It's going to go vertically that way. The left-hand side is not as specific, it's not as... Accurate. I mean, I've got these three points. I'm not 100% sure how quickly it's going up. It looks like it's going up kind of quickly, like maybe it's going to go over and then come back down. I don't know. So this would be a point where maybe I want to pick some extra values for x. If I just start picking integers, negative 1, 2, 3, and so on, that should give you a better idea of what's going on here. So negative 1 got me 0, negative 2.25, negative 3.4, negative 4.5, negative 5.57. And they seem to be also leveling out pretty quickly. Um, it doesn't look like they're going up quickly enough at that point to actually reach that horizontal asymptote. So negative 1, 0, negative 2.25, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.57. It's kind of going up gradually at that point. So that tells me it probably just flattens out. Again, if it's going to cross the horizontal asymptote, it's going to do it probably by the time it gets to 4 or 5. So if it doesn't cross by then, probably it's not going to. Once again, we have the ability to check. We're going from let's six, six, negative 8 to 8 at a scale of 1. We're going from negative 6 to 6 at a scale of 1. It may not show the whole. No, it didn't show the whole, but um, that's just ha that's a matter of it, the way it picks things. It picks all these values. Actually, it won't show the whole because I got the, the non-whole function in there. But anyway, um, if I were to graph y equals 1 also, there's my horizontal asymptote. You can see that <coughs> our graph in relation to the asymptote looks about the same. That tells me to graph it pretty well. You should be satisfied with that. 